ever pondered over why certain operations in your organization seem to drag on forever? Could there be a hidden bottleneck you're not aware of? Welcome to the world of the theory of constraints, a powerful methodology that helps us identify and manage these limiting factors to optimize the overall performance of a system or process. To begin with, imagine an organization with a product that goes through three processes, cutting, heating, and assembly. By comparing the total time required in each process to the available time, we can identify the bottleneck. If the heating process takes the longest time, then it becomes the bottleneck. This leads us to the first step in the theory of constraints, identifying the system's bottlenecks. These bottlenecks are critical points where production or flow is restricted. Output. Once we've identified the bottlenecks, the next step is to exploit them. This means ensuring that the bottleneck resource is actively utilized and produces as many units as possible. Prioritize productivity and utilization. A classic example comes from the goal, where Alex ensured that machines were always running during breaks and that workers were present at furnaces even during idle periods. The third step is to subordinate everything else to the bottlenecks. This means aligning the production schedule with the capacity of the bottleneck resource. Non-bottleneck activities should be synchronized with the bottleneck because optimizing non-bottlenecks won't significantly improve overall throughput. The fourth step is to elevate the system's bottlenecks. This involves investing in improving the bottleneck's capacity, such as upgrading machinery or training workers to increase the bottleneck's efficiency. Finally, repeat the process continuously. As bottlenecks shift or new ones emerge, revisit the steps. Continuous improvement ensures sustained efficiency gains. In the theory of constraints, throughput refers to the rate of production within a given period, measured in dollars using the formula. Throughput margin equals sales revenue minus direct material cost. It's akin to the traditional concept of contribution margin. Consider a factory that produces widgets. The assembly process is the bottleneck due to limited machine capacity. By applying the theory of constraints, the company focuses on maximizing widget production at the assembly stage, thus increasing overall throughput. Similarly, in project management, a software development project may face delays in coding, which is the bottleneck. By prioritizing coding tasks and ensuring developers work on the bottleneck, the project accelerates, resulting in faster project completion. That's it for today's session on the theory of constraints. We hope this understanding helps you identify and address bottlenecks in your own systems and processes. Until next time, keep learning with Lenora the Learning Lab.